I think it's, it's becoming more and more important. Uh, I think if you would have asked me that question 10 years ago, would have been not so much. Two years ago, a lot more. And today, really a lot more. Um, I think generally, um, you know, we've seen a big growth of interest in this area um, from tenants. Um, whether that's um, events, like putting yoga on, um, whether it's just having a better place to work in terms of the quality and finish in the lobby, um, or having art in the lobby is becoming much more popular. Uh, you know, the role of amenities in CRE over the last 10 years is part of the war for talent, right? It's one of the weapons, one of the tools that uh, people who are trying to attract the best talent are using to, uh, one, attract it, and two, retain it. I mean, there are um, uh, plenty of organizations that understand that creating the gilded cage can be a very compelling uh, retention strategy. And I'm not really sure what the differential is, like how much would a person need to get paid to give up the gilded cage, so to speak. Right? And I'm not sure it even comes back to money. I think it, it'll probably come back to opportunities because talent will go where the opportunities is, where the upside is. I think amenities have made a tremendous impact in uh, the retention and recruitment for employees because I think they care more about that than they care about, say, their title or even their salary. Amenities have become increasingly important over the past number of years within commercial real estate. Uh, the reason for that is because of tenants looking towards the owner or the landlord as being partners in talent attraction and talent retention. Smart companies are using uh, amenities, uh, and I'm talking about uh, food service, uh, meeting space, um, concierge type services, uh, valet parking, all of these types of things are uh, tools to, uh, one, uh, engage tenants and workers but two, to also intensify the use of the asset. When it comes to amenities, we also have to understand that there's, there are generational shifts, right? So when you have boomers in your building versus Gen Xers or Y and, and, and Gen Z, their requirements are going to be different. Their expectations are going to be different. And I think that from an amenity mix perspective, we need to hit this both horizontally to ap appeal to a great diversity of people as well as vertically from a, from a generational perspective. Previously, our experience with tenants was that they, we would see them when they walked through our building lobby and that would, that would be the end of it. And today, there's this expectation that we need to provide a much higher level of amenities and services uh, to allow those tenants to compete with some of their peers uh, in, the, in the attraction of their talent. I think that we have to get more granular. We have to get more custom. First and foremost, I think that we're realizing that there's great diversity. Great diversity in terms of people in our office buildings, great diversity in terms of people in our residential buildings. And it is that diversity that we now need to tailor to. What that has prompted is us to get increasingly creative into what kind of amenities we need to put into our buildings. Uh, so that's, that's a learning process as we go on, but it's forced us to, to continue to evolve our thinking and, and improve the, the experiences that we're providing for our building occupants. Most important in terms of a building is the experience, is how I feel when I walk into a space. Do I feel welcome? Do I feel like I want to run out the door? Do I ultimately know that, that the data, my data halo that I'm bringing with me into that building is integrating with ultimately the data halo of the building itself? The amenities war has certainly made a lot of buildings that previously looked or behaved differently look and behave very much the same. This amenities war is almost driven to the point where now we're starting to look at things like service as an amenity, not space as an amenity, because a service can be more distinguishable than saying, well, there's a renovated lobby over here and a roof deck over here and a conference center over here. You know, most buildings have that, and so it's harder and harder to distinguish one asset from another just based on space alone. It's all about attracting and retaining that spirit of understanding and that spirit of experience that makes me want to be in this building.